Well, this is certainly not the video I was expecting to make, but it is official, I am moving out of California. The reason I say maybe, okay, is he going to leave California? Well, maybe. He may not be able to leave. The reason I say that is California is so broke. California is like one of the worst run states there is. I mean, just a terrible amount of welfare, the massive immigration, just, you know, bleeding the state. You know, they're just some of the poorest run cities there are, but they got the greatest weather. I mean, I escaped 30 years ago for the same reasons he's leaving. And it's way worse now than it's ever been. Uh, you know, people don't realize that leaving the state ain't that easy. It's just not that easy. But I'll get into it and I'll explain to you why. It's going to really, you're going to, it'll be bothering some of you, believe me. Okay, so this is the beginning of uh, Graham's video, Leaving California. So I, I run these things at a little bit higher speed so we can get through them quicker. This is going to be, uh, so it may, may sound a little bit fast, but you'll be able to keep up. So let's watch a little bit. A growing number of its residents are packing up and moving out. Experts say over the past decade, around 150,000 people have left the state. The U.S. Census Bureau says California had a net loss of 190,000 people last year. I'm out of here. Yeah. When, when do you leave? Soon. Yeah. Texas, sir. Yeah, I'm going to go to Texas. Yeah, it's funny because Joe Rogan actually went to Austin, Texas, where I'm at right now. Uh, anyways, which Joe, if you're watching, uh, I've got two jujitsu gyms. Uh, I recommend them both. Thanks. Well, this is certainly not the video I was expecting to make, but it is official, I am moving out of California. This is not a decision that was taken lightly. In fact, I've rejected the idea for years because California has always been my home. I was raised in Los Angeles. I went through the LA school system. My friends are here. I built my business here. And I don't Me think too. I would have the same perspectives I do now had I grown up anywhere else. So to a large extent, growing up in Los Angeles has shaped me into who I am today. But lately, it's been an ongoing struggle to stay. And more often than not, I've been coming up with fewer and fewer justifications of why I should not just pick up and leave to go somewhere else until I did just that. A few weeks ago, I put down a deposit to buy a home in Las Vegas, Nevada, and in a few months, that will officially be my new full-time residence. This is something I've been thinking about for a few years now, although it's always just been a distant thought that I pushed further and further behind because why fix what isn't broke? The breaking point came when my girlfriend and I were visiting some friends in Las Vegas and Jeremy decided to give us an impromptu home tour across some of the areas of Summerlin and Henderson. There wasn't traffic. There wasn't trash just thrown everywhere. Prices were really affordable. And something that afternoon just switched in that. So that's interesting what he just said. That's exactly what happened to me, but it was 30 years ago. I came to Austin, Texas. And again, there was plenty of there's really really fantastic investment opportunities as well uh, i was 28 i'd already made my first million in real estate in california and uh, you know similar to to uh, graham and anyways i went to this other state and i thought oh my god this place is a jewel this is beautiful it was clean and neat and like i say no not as much traffic and i mean just so many like parks and a lot of the things that and it was like that something snapped and I said, you know what? I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need to live there anymore. I'd already sold my company. I already made a lot of money. And so, and I was sick of the California crap in general. There's other stuff too. But what I did was I just said, that's it. And I, when I, I visited a buddy in, who left Santa Barbara, who went to Austin and, uh, you know, it took me three days. I said, that's it. I put my house up for sale. And within 26 days I moved, I was gone. I was gone that quick. And there's good reason that and I'm going to get into this, why I'm concerned for Graham and some of these other guys that are leaving California. And I'll explain why. Because even though you're leaving, guess what? They may keep their hooks in you. But let's, let's keep watching for a little bit. And maybe now is the right time to make this happen. See, previously, before the shutdown, I felt like there was an opportunity cost of leaving Los Angeles. This was an area where everyone was moving to. It was a great spot to network. Macy had a great job going into the office every day. And the thought of picking all of that up, cutting ties, and leaving was just too much. But once everything was shut down and both of us went entirely remote, there was the realization that we could work from pretty much anywhere. And we don't have to be anchored to one specific city to lead a fulfilling and happy life. Not to mention, on paper, I'm not oblivious to how much money I would be saving if I moved to a no income tax state like many have done before me. And that's now a number that's grown to the point where I can no longer ignore the cost benefit of moving. Now, I realize this has almost become the new trend for people to publicly talk about leaving California, and this just feeds into the notion that everyone is fleeing the state. But truth be told, as a Los Angeles resident who grew up here my entire life, who never thought they would ever leave, I could say from my own experience, the benefits of living here have diminished significantly over the last few years. And while the reasons behind this are complex, these are some of the issues that stood out in my decision. By the way, this is usually the point in the video where if you've not already hit the like button, it helps me out tremendously. Just give it a quick tap. It's totally free. Yeah, subscribe to my, my uh, channel too, please. <laughs>
It takes just a split second. It helps out the almighty YouTube algorithm. So with that said, thank you so much for doing that, and we'll begin here. First, let's talk briefly about taxes, because I'm sure this is what most of you want to hear about, so I will address it. For those that don't know, California has the highest state income tax across the entire U.S., and it's as high as 13.3%. Now, throughout my entire 12-year-long career, I've always been supportive of paying my fair share and making sure I support the state that's allowed me so many unique opportunities and experiences. In fact, in a way, this is almost the cost of doing business and getting to reap the benefits of living in the city. For example, maybe someone pays an extra $10,000 a year in tax, but by doing so, they're able to make an extra $40,000 a year. So in those situations, the tax more than pays for itself. But lately, I've been feeling like I'm getting less and less for the taxes that are contributed. And from a cost-benefit standpoint, there's a lot I'm leaving on the table if I choose to stay. And when it comes to the future and wanting to start a family and wanting to use that money to have a much larger impact on the world one day, the cost of taxes is something I need to evaluate. Now, on the surface, from a number standpoint, leaving the state would save me a lot of money. Just this year alone, I'm estimating I'll pay about $400,000 towards California state income tax. And last year, I paid about $200,000 towards state income tax, none of which, by the way, is deductible on a federal level. So I'm at the point where I have to closely monitor where my money is allocated and if it's worth relocating to a place where everything goes a lot further. As most of you know, I'm all about long-term compounded growth when you invest your money. That sounds like he makes about $3 million a year, <laughs> okay? So, because the, roughly, I think he's paying about 13% state tax. So, you do the math on that. You know, he's he's a high net worth individual. He's making about $3 million a year, and that's why he's paying three hundred ninety dollars to $400,000 $400, a year in, in uh, state tax. That's how high it is. That's how disgusting it is. And in my current income, a $300,000 a year savings could turn into $9 million 15 years from now. That's a lot of money that could go towards the projects, organizations, and innovations I want to directly support. And as I continue to grow my career and expand, this is something I want to be very diligent of. Not to mention, Los Angeles taxes just about everything. They have one of the highest sales taxes in the nation at close to 10%. And the city also has a business tax on top of everything else that they require you to pay into if you're working within the city as an independent contractor or sole proprietor. There's just so much to keep track of, and it makes it very difficult to understand where your money is going or how it's being spent. The second, it's also incredibly unfortunate that homelessness and crime has been... Yeah, I just want to say this. This is one of the things that it, it, in California is not the only one now they're killing entrepreneurism they're just killing it they're making it so hard for a guy to start out with nothing you know that it, it, they I mean they're tying their hands before they can get out their feet it used to be you know a carpenter you'd start a little business and you know you work for cash or whatever any money you could get just to survive and then once you made enough you start okay I now I got to go legit and I'm hiring people and I got insurance and that sort of thing I mean that's kind of the norm now they got your hands bound from the day one. You know, I mean, they're trying to, a guy who creates a gym and he's, you know, struggles to put together and get two grand worth of, you know, equipment for his gym. And they want to tax him on his $2,000 worth of barbells and, you know, lead weights and, you know, steel weights. It's pathetic. But anyways, let's keep watching been a major problem of Los Angeles for as long as I've been alive. Although in the last few years, it's taken a drastically different turn. It's been nearly impossible to walk down the street without stepping past drug usage, tents, trash, and people who are not being treated appropriately. It's an epidemic that's not been properly addressed. So check this out. A buddy of mine has a uh like an acre of property in downtown Los Angeles. And I think it was Goodwill was renting this vacant lot from him uh, that's next to one of their other facilities. Well, they would always police it. They'd have somebody walk the gates. It's fenced property. Well, they didn't renew their lease. They left. And so all of a sudden, all the homeless, like you just saw in that picture, piled up against his fence. And now he's trying to lease the place. He can't get the place leased because of all these homeless and they're defecating and pissing, you know, and out in the open and all kinds of stuff. It's just a, a gross, stinky mess. A lot of even prostitution goes on in those tents. It's pretty, pretty, pretty foul situation. So he says, ah, the hell with it. And so he decides he's going to wash his parking lot. So he turns on the water and lets it run down the parking lot and it starts running under the tents. And it's like, yeah, get the hell out of here. You know, he wants him gone. And police come. He's like, okay, good. We're going to get rid of him. No. They came and talked to him. They said, hey, listen, you turned on that water. Look, we don't want to cause you any problems, but here's the deal. You're creating a hazardous waste situation because you're washing their feces into the street so think about that how screwed up is that anyways that's california though in a nutshell just idiots running the whole damn state and the state has not found a way to remedy the situation and give people the adequate care they need it's gotten to the point where my girlfriend does not feel safe to walk down to the grocery store at night because there are people shouting and throwing things on the sidewalk as yeah and remember kate steinley okay remember kate steinley they make their way down the street. Subsequently, crime has also increased. In downtown LA, some parts have seen more than a 200% increase in crime. And while the entire situation is very complex to solve, it just seems like there's so much happening all at once that it can't adequately be addressed in the way that it needs. Now, I certainly don't want this to be taken the wrong way because I am not the victim. The real victims here are the people on the streets. But it's frustrating to see a lack of care for the mentally ill or people sleeping on the sidewalks with very few resources to turn to. Now, you would assume that California, with a $3.2 trillion GDP, would have the financial means to properly handle the situation and give people the proper attention that they need. But they haven't, and it's only gotten worse. People with severe mental illness are left on 
the streets to fend for themselves. People struggling with addiction are thrown to the side, and care facilities are too overcrowded to accommodate everyone. People with disabilities have nowhere to turn, so they're ignored and they're left to beg on the beach. It's a problem that desperately needs attention, and the shutdown has only worsened everything by many magnitudes. Now, this is a very sobering realization of what many parts of Los Angeles are now like. Here's a Google Street View image from September of 2014, and here is the exact same spot now, just a few years later. It's sad to see that we have not found a proper way to help the situation, and instead, we've largely just ignored the core issues or offered too little to... Yeah, I hate to say it, but a lot of that stuff is by design. They've loosened the rules and allowed that stuff. It's all political. Uh, there's a lot of money in poverty, just so you know. There's a lot of money. Uh, a lot of federal money comes in. You get to hand it out to people that make a lot of money off it, and they'll hand it back to the politicians that put, put the mess in, to, in place. So believe me, there's a lot of money in poverty and, and all this homeless crap. And, you know, they could, build a, they could build a park and put them in a tent and have all the sharp. They don't want it. They want them on the streets. They want it to be a disaster. But let's keep watching too late. Lastly, I think it's no surprise that the cost of living in Los Angeles is really high, and there's a premium that you pay to live in an area where you can drive to the beach, to the mountains, to the desert, and to Disneyland, all in the same day with 75 degree weather year-round. But that cost comes at the expense of nearly everything. The obvious one is housing. Now, I've always maintained that you can live in a high cost of living area on a budget if you're creative and you don't mind putting in the work. For example, I was able to buy my duplex in the middle of the city for zero dollars out of pocket through a series of strategic renovations and refinances that allowed me to live in there for nothing while I rented out the other side. But still, the initial purchase price of that home was enough to purchase a mansion in any other part of the country. I was at a comedy club not not long ago in Los Angeles. Anyways, Jay Leno will come in there once in a while, and he'll he'll run the show on on Sundays. This comedian gets up, and he's talking about how great things are, and how he got you know he got a big part in a you know some production on TV, and he's got a baby coming, and he says he finally bought that million dollar home that he always dreamed of. Uh, then he goes on to say, but you know what? In my dreams, it was never a two bedroom one bath. <laughs> okay, because that's the reality. What is two bedroom one bath cost you a million dollars? Uh, it just being near the beach. Let's keep listening. It just becomes impossible to create any affordable housing when you're required to allocate so much space and so many resources to things that not everyone will use. Of course, then you get into the nuances of not in my backyard or turning a residential area of single-family homes into multifamily homes. Yeah, and I'm going to go to that. When they talk about affordable housing, that's such a joke. When when you get a city talking about, oh, we got to make affordable housing, meaning free housing, okay, for a lot of people, okay, it destroys it for the middle class because the middle class are having to pay for it all. So when they do affordable housing... They're not thinking about the people that are working for, you know, that have a job and, and make up to, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars. They're not even thinking about any of those people because they're making it more expensive for the working people. They make it unaffordable for the working. That's what's so sad. And a lot of people at the bottom end of that, they just give up and they go to a tent. But let's keep watching which, of course, I get to a certain degree. But still, you should be able to redevelop an existing apartment building to add more units without that being just another luxury apartment building. But Los Angeles has yet to find a way to do this, thereby driving up prices because it requires developers to build spaces that aren't given their most practical, useful purpose. Beyond that, there's also the issues of rampant wildfires, air quality issues, horrendous traffic at all hours, business tax and regulation, and a myriad of other issues, none of which, by the way, are political. But finally, something had to give, and yeah. eventually it did. And it seems like moving out of California has become more... So, all right, I'm going to get to my point with this and why he may not be escaping. So take a look at this up here. This is from the Wall Street Journal. So look at this. This guy here, Mr. Uh, Obus, he lives in New Jersey, but he's got a place in the Adirondacks in New York. And just because he has a residence there, they decided, no, nah, we're going to take you for income tax. And so the judge rules here, New Jersey resident required to pay New York state taxes on all of his income, all of his income, not his rental income in that other state, all of his income. He moved to a state for lower taxes and he screwed. He screwed. And this is what can happen to Graham. And so look at this. He's, he's paid, he owes $527,000 in back taxes for income taxes, even though he's got a house that's only worth $290,000. Uh, it's ridiculous. And like you said, this fits into the whole realm of government overreach. Well, listen, they're starving for money. You know, they've had this pandemic that's wiped them out. Uh, you know, like in New York, of course, you know, Cuomo's chased everybody out and killed half the uh, seniors. Of course, I'm sensitive to that. I got a, I got a mother with Alzheimer's uh, that I take care of. Uh, but anyhow, like I said, this is their favorite hunting ground. He's, he's, see, he's an obvious target because it's a high profile, high net worth individual. And the thing is, is when you've got guys like Graham Stephan and his buddy Meet Kevin, those guys, I mean, they just, hey, I'm worth $8 million. Ah, I'm worth $10 million. Now I'm worth 12 Now I'm worth 15 Now I'm worth 26 <laughs> You know, you guys are totally under the radar. And so I would just advise you, uh, 
Graham, be careful. Uh, hey, Kevin, you too. If you guys want to, if you're considering Austin, Texas, come come see me. I'll give you a tour. Let's watch the rest of this. More and more and more and more common now that remote working is widely accepted. I've spoken with a lot of realtors out in Las Vegas, and all of them have confirmed exactly what I've thought. Most of the buyers in the one to two million dollar price point are coming from California, and they're all leaving for the same reasons as I am. Many of those buyers are also potentially worried about increasing California tax rates, a potential wealth tax, and the unknowns of what California might try to instate. So they feel like getting out now is better than waiting, especially if they're able to operate a remote working environment. I'm also thinking about this decision long term as well. One day I would love to start a family, and there's the concern that California could get much worse if nothing is done. Crime rates, traffic, trash, air quality, congestion, tax. Taxes and business regulation make it very difficult to want to stay. And the differences in terms of quality of life is just too significant to ignore. Now, if you're curious why Las Vegas, that's a good question. I want it to be somewhere driving distance of Los Angeles because I own property here, my girlfriend and I both have family here, and it's easy to drive here and vacation for a weekend without much forethought. I like the idea of just being a four-hour drive away from everything in the event something came up. And if I moved to any other area, it would require us to book a plane ticket and a lot more planning than simply just jumping in the car last minute and then navigating on autopilot. We also both have a lot of friends and business connections in Las Vegas, some of which just happen to have moved from LA to Vegas years before us. So it just kind of makes some sense to move with the tide and join them. I'm still going to keep all of my properties. I'm still going to keep my home here. Okay, now that is where I believe he's making a mistake. Graham, I would sell your entire portfolio. It isn't that good anyways, and it's probably going to get worse. So he's going to have to pay taxes on all the income that he gets from his from his properties, which he doesn't get much. I just analyzed his income not long ago on those little properties. Let's see, they can make the argument that he still lives there. And now listen to what else he says. Here, so we have a place to return back to for vacations. But for all other purposes, it just makes too much sense to pick up and move to Nevada. Now on the positive side here, geographically, California is a beautiful place to live that has a lot to offer. And I believe there's always going to be demand for people who want to live by the coast. But for me, the opportunity cost of not moving just got to a place where it's worth it to move. Now when it comes to you, absolutely nothing changes. I'm still gonna be making the exact same content and I'm building out an even better filming set in Las Vegas. And I'm also gonna recreate a space that's exactly the same over there as I have right here. So visually, you're not gonna even be able to tell there was a difference. But okay, don't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that because the state is going to make the case that you're making your videos right where you're at right now in California and that you just created the other one so you could say that you did it in Nevada. Believe me, the, the state is relentless. Uh, they're absolute dogs. They'll go after you. And they're, I would tell you, I would advise you, uh, make it obvious that everything you're doing, all the video, all the videos you're making, make them, make them in Nevada. If you, if you, if you don't make it, absolutely obvious that they're making them that you're making your videos in your home in Nevada then they're going to be able to make the argument that no you're, you're making these in California and that that is just a facade that's so that you can live in California and claim that you're living there remember this guy right here oh, it's a hedge fund manager very wealthy guy and you know and listen the hedge fund managers usually own the politicians they do the hedge fund managers own own the Democrats in New York. They do whatever they tell them to do. Uh, but uh, you know what? He's not escaping it. And there's just too much money leaving. They're chasing everybody out of New York. They're chasing everybody out of California for the same reasons. I would just say, Graham, you, you know, move, sell all your property. Uh, you know, and you know, here's the other thing you got to think about: California. They actually are reading license plates. So they'll know if you're there. They're going to count the days that you're there. If you've got a private aircraft, they check the FAA records. And listen, you guys are, I mean, you're on the, you're on the radar like crazy. You know, take a look at this. You, you, then like me, here's you and, and uh, me, Kevin. And what are you guys talking about? You're talking about making a million dollars per month. And now look at this one. Here's, here's me, Kevin again. And look, what is this? Zero to $26 million by age 28. So he is very close. I mean, you guys are advertising Watch me closely. Keep me. Trap me in California when you do this stuff. And it's funny because I I, uh, I'd sent, I think I'd sent a letter to meet Kevin. I think I actually told him. I said, I'd be careful telling everybody how much money you make because otherwise somebody's going to want to take it from you. And uh, I, I believe it's going to be the state of California. You understand that they, they want to have a wealth tax now. Or they want to they want to charge you based on, in other words, you pay a, a tax on on what you're worth, okay? And I think that the, they're setting that at about $30 million. And so, because uh, I have a friend of mine that actually is well worth more than that, and he he just, I mean, believe me, he, he's got private aircraft, he's got all kinds of cool stuff, and he makes sure that he stays out. In fact, I told him I was going to buy a beach house in California. He said, Tom, don't do it, don't do it. He said, they'll try to claim you live there. And I believe him. And after seeing what I've seen with this New York guy, I ain't doing it. But, but this kind of stuff here, guys, uh, meet Kevin and Graham. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. You're going to get yourselves in trouble. And like I say, you're, you're getting right to that criteria where, you know, 
whether you're exaggerating or not, believe me, they're going to believe you. They're going to believe you because they're going to want to believe you. And they're going to want to tax you on whatever you claim you're worth. But this $26 million by 28, I would not, they're going to be all over you guys. But, uh, and actually, meet Kevin's talking about staying in California. He thinks he's going to beat it out uh, by keeping. And I, let me go to that video, see if it's still here. Yeah, so listen to this for a second. Deductions, substantial deductions against my YouTube income. And now all of a sudden, I can have the best of both. I can contribute to California by providing better, safer, and more quality housing while at the same time being frugal and minimizing my taxes. When I can legally turn a large house into a triplex in California, that's known as the triplexification of California. And I'm now providing more housing, so I'm providing society what it needs in California. And I'm also receiving big write-offs for doing that because California wants us to provide more housing. Thanks to special new laws in California, I also don't have to fulfill all these crazy parking requirements that are usually required. I can actually extinguish parking for the sake of providing more housing, which California desperately needs. So rather than pack my bags and bail, I found a unique solution that works for myself and Lauren to where now I get weather, the deals I know, in an area where there's not a lot of land. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. The California will stick to you so hard. And believe me, they'll, they'll have us an incentive like that, and then they'll just take it away. It'll be over with. All right, let's go back to Graham. I also can't say that I'm not sad to see so many people leaving and for the city I grew up in to degrade so quickly and for the quality of living to go down so fast while also feeling like there's no real solution to work towards. And I understand, it's such a delicate, complex situation, but to see such a sharp decline so quickly was rather shocking. But I'm also very excited on this next journey of life and for everything else to follow. That was a nice uh, video that uh, Graham did. And, uh, he, you know, he always is a thoughtful kid. He, he shares a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I would just tell you, Graham, get rid of your property. You're going to, you don't, like I say, you don't want to be like that guy. This guy, because believe me, they are watching you. And you guys are high profile. You talk about all your millions, uh, you know, making a million a month and this sort of thing. Believe me, you, you're, you're, you're going to get a lot of unwanted attention and you're going to be harassed beyond belief. It's just not going to be worth it. If you're a first time watcher here, please uh, get my book, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. If you're interested in making money in real estate, I can teach you a lot through a $20 book. Uh, and also, I have a mentorship. If you want to take a mentorship, go to flipanythingusa.com for that. But uh, hey, thanks for watching.